Good morning, America. My name's Molly Andrews. And I'm Jude Thomas. And we're going to be your host for Hot Seat. Oh, let's bring out our victims. Oh, never mind, contestants. Um, first we're gonna do introductions. So basically, you're gonna say your name, your spice tolerance, and if you're scared or not. So, Molly, um, this is an example. Um, what's your name? My name is Molly Andrews. What's your spice tolerance out of 10? Negative four. It's gonna be and, a rough game. <laughs> and are you scared? I'm very scared. I'm wearing a wig right now. This isn't my natural luscious locks. So if I get too hot, this is coming off. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Well, I thought I was going to ask a question. I was confused. So I'm Joe Myers. Uh, my spice tolerance, I will say, is probably a 10. Uh, so I'm kind of excited to try these because it'll be my first time. Yeah, you can layer them up. And uh, uh, am I scared? Well, I'm not used to being on stage here. Uh, usually I'm in the, on the drum set, so we're hiding. But we're ready to rock. I'm Lenore Berger. Um, I don't know what my... I feel like I can handle spice pretty well, but... This is a different level, so I'll say I'm a, I'll, I'll say a five. My name's Chris yeah. McInerney. Um, I'd say my spice level's like a six or a seven, and I'm a little bit scared. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Lauren Casson. Um, my husband would say my spice level is a zero. I get mild everywhere we go for wings, but I ain't scared. I'm going to go for it. Um, it, I know, I'm scared. Okay. <laughs> I'm Karen Harold. Um, I'd say my spice level is four, five, maybe. I don't know. Uh, I don't mind it if it tastes good. Hoob said that earlier, and I agree with that. So, um, but yes, I'm scared. So, <laughs> should I start? Okay, so. Our rules for today are that, so everybody has to eat a wing, even if you're not answering, because I will catch you. I have my eyes, especially on you, Lord. I'm watching you. Um, and our second rule is that, wait, what's the second rule? I kind of forgot. You want to start top oh, yeah. to bottom, left to right. Otherwise, it's going to be a pretty painful game for you, and Trento will make you another one. So watch out. Yeah. OK, so now should we go down? OK. So we're just going to go down our hot sauces for today. Um, the first one, least spicy, um, it's called Hot One's Original Buffalo Hot Sauce. So, And the spice rating is 1,800, the Scoville rating. So you can start. So which one do I pick? This one? How's it feeling so far? I'm looking for spice. Chicken's great. God. It's good. Chris? I'm good. All right. <laughs> okay. First question for Karen and Joe. What role does faith play in your daily life, and how has it shaped your decisions and actions? I'm, it was for <laughs> you want to try names? I know we both have curly hair. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, what does faith play in my life? Well, I have grown up in the church, um, so I feel like faith has like shaped me in every aspect. So when I think about how who I want to be and uh, how I want to act towards people and everything, I just look towards my faith, and that just shapes everything. So. Uh, Large part. <clears throat> uh, for me, it serves as a compass. There's an example that's been set um, by someone who's perfect, and I'm far from that. And so uh, I constantly am challenging myself and looking back on actions that I've done through the day and what I, who I want to be tomorrow. And so faith is my, uh, it's my guide for. Um, 
you know, who I'm going to be and who I'm going to, how I'm going to treat people and um, just a constant uh, growth journey. The next one we'll be trying is Funky's Hot Sauce, Factory Stellar Fuzz Hot Sauce, and the Scoville rating is 19,000. Second question is, what is your favorite part of the Horizons mission and why, and why the four parts and what, wait, what? I'm so confused. <laughs> what is your favorite part of the Horizons mission and why? The four parts are right here. Guided by the Holy Spirit, growing together, impacting the world around us, and you have a place at the table. This question is to Chris, Lauren, and Lenore. I guess my favorite part is the uh, one generation to the next. Um, I love seeing oh, youth step up and lead, um, youth of kids that we've known for a long time. I think that's a huge part of the church and probably my favorite part. I think mine would be um, there's a place at the table for everyone. Uh, I love getting to know lots of people. I'm a huge people person and I love going out into the community of Lincoln and um, just getting to know people and knowing that Horizons has always been a place for everybody is uh, a very true statement and I love that. So I think that's a wonderful part of our mission statement. I was gonna talk about both of those parts, but seeing my kids grow up in this church and my husband and I have been here for about 12 years now, um, kind of almost moving from one generation to the other is, is something that's been so powerful and the family that supports us and continues to support us through that is, is everything to us. The next one we'll be having is uh, Good Heat Queso Sin Queso Hot Sauce. That's 52,000. Joe, I love your sniff first technique. That's good. You like. I want the full flavor. <laughs> yes, ma'am. <laughs> we don't waste food in my family. <laughs> Karen and Lauren, how are you guys doing down there? Hanging in there? All right. Oh, yeah, she's confident. You don't really feel it for a second, and then it starts to kick in, and you're like, oh, it gets a little worse. Okay. Um, so our third question is for Lenore and Chris. Um, can you share a personal experience where your faith was tested and how you navigated that challenge? Um, I think most recently when my father-in-law passed away, um, there was a lot going on in our house. I didn't want to cry. I was hoping I wouldn't get this question. But um, I think the biggest part that got us through was, um, well, I guess me personally, I can't speak for Chris, but um, I had learned that I had put a lot of my, um, I was trying to get all my answers from Chris, all of my personhood from him. And that's not his place, that's God's. And when watching him go through, the, go through that experience, um, I learned that I had to let him go through that, and I needed to rely on the Lord. And so that was a huge test for me, but I'm thankful for it because um, I hadn't really seen how I needed to, go, to grow in that way. And so there you have it. Thanks for making me answer that one. <laughs> <laughs> Got you. Oh, I have to go. Um, I guess I feel like it's tested, I don't know, weekly, daily. Um, I look at things that are negative, um, and sometimes I ask why. Uh, Gaza, you know, the Ukraine, um, all those things that 
you know, give us trouble and we see negativity on them. And I think that's just part of the journey is, is prayer and, you know, asking um, why and how and just trusting that there'll be a resolution. Thank you, guys. The next one is La Pimenterie, the forbidden fruit hot sauce, <laughs> which is 1,000 to 124,000. Could definitely taste that one. <laughs> Number four is a question for Joe, Karen, and Lauren. How has the previous generation impacted your faith? Oh, you start with me. I should start with Lauren because she <laughs> yelled at me earlier. <laughs> Uh, like I said before, I grew up in the church, so I had a lot of um, adults that surrounded me, and um, I'm just so thankful for them. They um, showed me how to love people and be generous, and so I think that impacted how I look at life, too. So it's been really great to be able to have those people mentor me and come alongside me, so it impacted my whole life. Um, yeah, I have a similar story growing up in a church. Um, my parents who came up today and my grandparents on both sides, um, all everybody modeled what leading a Christian life can look like. And my uncle was my youth pastor growing up and he had a really big impact on me as well and kind of sprung me forward through some of those really hard times going through high school. So the, the generation previous to me has really shown me kind of how I can lead my family in a Christ-centered life as well. All right, I'm different. So in my observation, the previous generation um, is quiet. Previous generation works through their troubles and kind of holds their own. Um, I went to church as a kid because that's what we did. Um, a lot of adults that were around me went to church, but nobody talked about it. Why, right? And, uh, <clears throat> sorry. That was, uh, that was one of the things that I fell in love with this church about was the intentionality of uh, sharing one's faith. Um, so in the mass, it was more quiet, but I did have some amazing mentors growing up that really invested in me to show me what it meant uh, to, to have faith and to lead. Now, I didn't understand fully when I was a kid and believe, uh, and that's been a journey uh, my entire life, but um, thankful for those who took the time and for this church for building leaders, both children and adults, to be intentional about how they share their faith. Thank you, guys. How are we feeling? Ready for the next one? Not a lot of sweating going on. First service, man, there were beads everywhere. You guys are, you guys are doing all right. We're still going. We got time yet. The next one is the bomb, Beyond Insanity Hot Sauce, which I have heard really bad things about. So <laughs> we'll see how this goes. And this one is 135,600. Not my favorite. <laughs> okay. And it like takes a minute to kick in and then you like, uh. <laughs> 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 Win. 
done till it's done. <laughs> yeah. Okay. The next one is for Chris and Joe. In moments of doubt or uncertainty, what scriptures or teachings do you turn for to guidance and strength? Oh, mine is uh, Philippians 4.13. Um, all things are possible through Christ. Um, it's one that's always stuck with me. It's short and sweet, and I feel it covers about everything. <clears throat> so... Um, one of my favorite parts, and, and it's, it's a little confusing, but it's one of my favorite parts of the story, the Gospels throughout, is you have these individuals, these disciples that walked alongside of God in the flesh, and they're constantly doubting and confused and, and you know, I think bewildered about the things that they see, and, and you go through these stories, and I think, man, how can you doubt? Uh, you, you saw it with your own eyes. And uh, that gives me a little bit of comfort because I'm, I feel like I'm that way in life a lot of the times. Uh, Matthew 14, uh, <clears throat> there are, it is a little warmer on my lips. <laughs> I'm worried about what happens later in, in the tummy. Uh, Matthew 14, thank you. Uh, when, uh, when the disciples are sent out on the boat, uh, <clears throat> Jesus appears to them on the water and they're like, oh, a ghost. And they don't know what to do, right? And, and he says, I'm, you know, I'm God. I'm here. I'm, I'm the Lord, right? And Peter, uh, Peter's like, if that's you, God, you know, just say it and I'll come to you. And um, takes, that, takes that step, right? And gets a little bit of wind and um, starts to sink and Jesus grabs him. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, he, he's you of weak faith, right? Um, so, so I'm comforted by that, uh, that I'm not the only one who doubts and who struggles, and it's a, it's a constant journey. And um, even the guys that were there at the time um, had their growth too. That one just keeps going. I'm still in pain. <laughs> also, I've just been informed by Trentel that we will keep going to seven and that there is another one after the sixth one on your plate. So, it is worse. <laughs> the next one is chili monolaco matasanos hot sauce. Sorry guys. <laughs> What's this rating? This rating is 680,000. <laughs> Do you have to put, put it on there? Yeah. Oh, yeah. What is that? It is chili monolaco. I can You got that. That was. This is. Yes. This one is Hot Ones, The Last Dab. 2,693,000. I feel like I did more like The Last Dump. It's going to be. Wait. Go. Wait. I'm pretty sure we're supposed to do it. Why did I stop there? Are you like who? A lot or a little? A lot. Don't ask. Dump it. Prince said a lot. Just a little bit. A little bit more. Oh, I'll just say a little bit of a lot. I'm in trouble. Yeah, you're you're done. Look. Hope I see you out of here. How you feeling, Chris? <laughs> it's gonna be great, guys. How are you?
how are we feeling? Are we excited? <laughs> if you blow on it, it cools it down. Yeah. Science. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, cheers. <laughs> it tastes absolutely disgusting. <laughs> I'm gonna get a little more. <coughs> I can see people from first service in the crowd just like re experiencing this all. <laughs> Okay, last question. One second. <laughs> How do you approach discussions about faith with people who may have different beliefs or perspectives? <laughs> Karen, Lauren, and Lenore. Karen and Lenore. All right, we'll go over here first. Okay. It's not too bad. <laughs> but, um, so when I think about this question, I think that when I have discussions with people, it's not for me to change their mind. Um, it's me, for me to have a discussion with them. Um, I totally believe in the approach that it's gonna take people, oh, sorry, <laughs> uh, multiple times, even 20, 30 people to even touch their lives before they might accept Jesus. So I am just one uh, one touch point in their life. So my job to, when having this discussion with people with different beliefs is just to show them how Jesus has changed my life and not to change their mind, but to just love on them and show them why I believe in Jesus. Yeah, I think that the biggest thing for me to do is lead with my actions in a way that Jesus would want us to lead. Um, and there, there are lots of people I interact with in my daily life who have differing beliefs. And, um, you know, the way I can react to situations that are common between others or the way that I speak about others, the way that I, I lead um, with what I'm thinking and doing. And I think that that kind of like breaks down barriers. Um, I think in this day and age, Mandy's talked about this before and others, but, but being a Christian can sometimes put a bad taste in people's mouth. No pun intended. <laughs> but um, I, I like to think that the way that I lead will show people that you can lead a life that Jesus would be proud of and um, give, give others his hope and his light through how I, I, how I live. I think, and also with all of that, um, just being willing to share your life with people, like just doesn't matter where they are, what they're going through, where you might meet them. Everybody has value and everybody has worth if Christ, and you know, if, if Christ came to die for every single person, we can sacrifice some of our, just some of ourselves to be in their life with them and to really go and um, listen to them, not make them feel like they're less than, um, because I think they, a, a lot of people, especially in certain areas of life and in the world are treated that way constantly, and the church is not supposed to do that. We're supposed to be able to just be with people where they are at all times, and sometimes it, it is inconvenient and it feels a, like a lot, but that's where the joy of the Lord comes and really changes our perspective because there is something about um, being called at a time where you're like, I don't want to talk to this person right now, but it's like they're calling me, you're, they're calling you maybe for a reason and being willing to put yourself aside and to be Christ to people is really what, what it's all about. And I think um, that's, that's the most fun because you got to know a lot of people's stories and you have that opportunity just to be Christ to them in whatever capacity you have in that moment. 
All right, I wasn't, uh, I wasn't asked to speak on this one, but I wanted to say this, uh, I've been thinking about this question in particular. Um, your job isn't to change someone's heart. Your job's to be there. Um, for me, and, and I, love, I love being in this band behind, you know, that does this stuff, and, and so often we get back there and we think about our performance, and man, we wanna hit the notes right and just, you know, put on a really good performance, but often we're back there and we remind ourselves like we're worshiping too. Um, so don't go into it argumentative. Don't go into it with the, with the thought that you have to be the one to change them. Have them show up. Let God do it. Thank you. <clears throat> <laughs> Well, I don't know about you guys, but I'm getting my calcium over here. I've been, <laughs> I've been drinking a lot of milk. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, so that concludes our hot seat interview. Thank you so much for sharing your insights and experiences with us today. Before we wrap up, is there anything else you'd like to share or say? It burns. Um, thanks for letting us sample all the fun stuff. Um, yeah. <laughs> that was good. Fun. <laughs> His plate is completely clean. I just want to say this. It is completely clean. And Chris, good job, Chris. <laughs> yeah, where'd the bones go? <laughs> so first service, we asked, we made the youth answer a question since they've been up here suffering as well. Yes, Jude, you what uh, what's your favorite part about Horizons and, and what you think goes on in this church with our mission? Well, I think, I know my sister said some about this uh, first service, but I would agree. I think the best part about this church is the community that we've got here. <laughs> um, I've got a lot of mentors and people that like really care about the youth at that church. And that's helped me a lot with my faith and helped me I definitely have people to talk to if I ever have any questions or things like that. So it's really helpful and I love it here. Um, for me, um, probably, well, I have two answers. Number one, the food, cause I'm always hungry. And um, the second one is um, I just really like just the environment. It's really welcoming. You know, you walk in, it's like 8.30 in the morning and you already have people out there that are happy, they're greeting you, and they're just like happier there. And then, yeah, it's just joyful all around. 